No one more qualified to lead the proud women and men of the Coast Guard, and she will also be the first woman to serve as Commandant of the Coast Guard, the first woman to lead any branch of the United States Armed Forces. And it's about time. That was President Biden last week introducing Admiral Linda Fagan as the newest commandant of the U.S. Coast Guard. As he said, she is not only the first woman to lead the Coast Guard and its 42,000 active duty members, but the first woman to lead any of the U.S. military branches. Admiral Fagan graduated from the Coast Guard Academy in 1985, just five years after the Academy started graduating women, and has spent nearly 40 years in the Coast Guard serving on all seven continents. And Admiral Fagan joins us now. We are honored to have you on our show this morning. Congratulations. And I, I think I would like to take another moment uh, to talk about the historic importance of your new role. Um, when you graduated in 1985, there were 16 women total who graduated. How are those numbers now? And what would it take to help more women get on a track like yours? Hey, thank you. It's really a pleasure to be here with you uh, this morning, and thanks, uh, thanks for having me. The, uh, the Coast Guard Academy has changed significantly since uh, the time I was there in the mid-'80s. Uh, we, we currently have nearly 40 percent women enrolled at the Coast Guard Academy. Uh, I'm really excited about the, the talent and the diversity that I see coming, uh, coming through the Academy. Uh, my daughter is uh, in the Coast Guard as a lieutenant, and uh, there is just nothing but opportunity for her and uh, all of the, the men and women that have joined the service. I'm really excited about uh, the future as we look ahead. You know, Admiral, it's it's so interesting. Um, we were talking to Mark Brzezinski, Mika's brother, a year or so ago, and he was talking about when he was an ambassador in Sweden, he would go to meetings across Europe, and on the American side of the table, all men in, in, in these military meetings. On the European side, he said a lot of women, and he just said it was really striking in those rooms to see how the United States was so one-dimensional in its approach. And he was talking about uh, how you could really uh, see the difference in, in how both sides operated. I'm curious, in the future, in, in those sort of meetings, what do we gain by having leaders like you uh, in there that in the past have been shut out uh, from taking uh, lead roles in the United States military? Yeah, you know, diversity matters, and uh, diverse work teams outperform non-diverse work teams, and so bringing uh, that diversity forward, you know, regardless of whether it's a you know an international uh, diplomatic conversation or uh, you know on the mess deck at the the small boat stations that uh, where our uh, workforce is working in the Coast Guard, uh, and, and representation matters, you know, demonstrating to. Uh, individuals that, hey, there is nothing but uh, opportunity. There are no barriers to your uh, entry and success. And uh, I'm really excited that that now, uh, you know, that diversity and opportunity extends from the Commandant all the way down to the youngest recruit that uh, graduates uh, from Cape May uh, each week. Good morning, Admiral, and congratulations. You've served on all seven continents, often as the only woman on your ship, and now you are leading the Coast Guard. I'm curious what you see as some of the challenges now under your watch as you lead the Coast Guard. What should you be focused on? I, I note that there is an, a renewed focus or perhaps just a new focus on the Arctic. The United States Army uh, initiated the 11th Airborne yesterday to focus on that part of the world. Is yep. that somewhere you'll be looking as well? Yeah, no, absolutely, right? The United States is an Arctic nation. Uh, the Coast Guard is proud to, uh, you know, operate the, the Polar Star, my first unit, are currently our only heavy uh, icebreaker. And, uh, you know, we're on budget to begin building polar security cutters. We're excited to, uh, to see that ship come to fruition so that we're able to uh, create more presence in the, uh, in the Arctic. Uh, with regard to kind of intent and uh, work that I see as critical to the workforce as we move ahead, 
talent management, workforce management is really uh, going to be job one. Where we are, uh, we're recruiting, and uh, we are in the same race for talent that uh, the other military services are, and, and companies and corporations around the country. Uh, we've got uh, we've got some work to do there, but uh, we the organization provides nothing but uh, but opportunity, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to helping uh, make it easier for the folks that uh, want to serve and are serving. Admiral, good morning, Jonathan Lemire. Congratulations. Beyond the Arctic, tell us a little bit more about some of the things you're hoping to implement in your new role, whether it's new ships, new technology, new recruits, other areas of concern. Yeah, so obviously we uh, we are a globally deployed Coast Guard and, uh, you know, ensuring that we've got the uh, the equipment and the training and the capability uh, to remain, uh, you know, globally relevant. We, uh, you know, we are committed to, you know, free and free and open maritime realms. We uh, we provide just a lot of uh, value proposition as we engage with, uh, you know, countries and Coast Guards around the world. And uh, we will continue to, to commit to uh, to those kinds of operations. We are, you know, deployed uh, 365 days a year in the Eastern Pacific, in the Caribbean, in the counter narcotics effort. Uh, that work will uh, will continue, and just as our life saving and search and rescue work, you know, in the ports and communicate communities uh, around the nation, all all of that will continue. And uh, you know, my my role as commandant will be to ensure uh, that we've got the the resourcing and support, and we we get the right tools in the hands of again this just incredible workforce to ensure that we're, we're meeting uh, what the American public expects from their Coast Guard. And Admiral, before you go, I'm just curious, I, I have um, a platform that I'm working on with Forbes. It's the Forbes 50 over 50 list, where we talk to women who are reaching their greatest impact well after 50 in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. And I'm wondering, I ask them all this same question. I love all the diverse answers I get. Did you ever imagine as a younger woman that you would reach your greatest impact and be flourishing, thriving, even having your most impact making after. Making history. And making history after the age of 50. Yeah, so, no, I, uh, I, never, <laughs> I, I never imagined that I would still, that I'd still be serving, that I'd have this uh, opportunity. It, uh, it is a, a privilege to lead this incredible, talented workforce uh, that is the U.S. Coast Guard. I, I come to work every day. I serve to serve the workforce, and it is uh, it really is just a privilege and an honor. And uh, I'm I am excited uh, about the the opportunity and and the work ahead. I try not to think about my age, but uh, uh, you know here we go, and uh, I'm just super excited. Oh, we're flourishing, and there's a long runway. Admiral Linda Fagan, thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs>